how are you doing? Today I want to talk about crank length and I want to show you that crank length is important but it's not something that you should chase all the time when you're trying to improve your efficiency on the bike. So a lot of people will say to me, Scott, what crank length is optimal for me? How do I go quicker? Everybody wants to go faster. What you've got to remember is going fast is about fitness and it's about functionality. And what I mean by that is how efficient are you on the bike and how functional are you? How much stress is your body under and how does it break down? So how flexible are you through the hip, for example? How does the loading have an impact on you? So lots of riders may have a limited flexibility. They may have a limited range of movement through different joints. And that may just be through injury, through age, or through just a natural limit to the range of movement. So that's really important when it comes to choosing crank length, when it comes to choosing bar width, when it comes to choosing your saddle. But more often than not, I see riders who are on bikes that actually work for them. They've just got the wrong setup. So when we're chasing crank length, what tends to happen is riders are unaware of that efficient cadence that works for them. So I tend to look at riders, what's your goal? Riding a short time trial or maybe doing a long time trial. Maybe it's a long uh, endurance event, maybe they're crit racers, maybe it's just endurance sportives, maybe it's just social events, maybe it's just riding solo long distance. Whatever your goal is, your bike needs to be set up and your fitness needs to work for what you want to achieve. So when we're looking at crank length, most bikes will tend to come with a crank in the region of 170 or 172.5. And a lot of bikes, when they come like that, it's because we just get them off the shelf in sizes sort of 50, 52, 54, 56. They tend to be the bulk of the bikes that are bought. Now, the thing that a lot of people don't know is the space between each pedal through that bottom bracket, the Q factor is exactly the same on the 50 as it is in, on the 56. So a lot of riders are unaware that where they place their feet is the exact same from the small to the extra large and sometimes that can have a, a bearing on the efficiency of the pedal stroke. Normally riders who are looking for an optimal crank length do want to go quicker. They do want to go quicker in specific events. I see it a lot in time trialists. How can I improve my speed by dialing down the crank? It tends to be going lower. And I'll always come back with a question, well how's your fitness going? because I'll show you a number of positions that you might deem non-aero that are putting out quick times. Normally the saddle position is too far back in a lot of riders, so the glute becomes deactivated as they sit on the back of the saddle, so they overload the quadricep. Therefore, they burn the quad more. If that's matched with a longer crank, then you tend to find that there is possibly an impingement through the pelvis originally, and that's putting a little bit of a twist through the pedal stroke that they've maybe deemed or someone in the club's told them, hey, your saddle's far too high, your pelvis is moving. It's got nothing to do with the height, it's just that the range of movement through the pelvis is not quite what it could be, and that might be because of age, an injury, it may be that it's a female rider who's given birth and never really had it picked up that there is a bit of impingement there. There's lots of reasons. It's not a needle in a haystack, but it's just part of something that a lot of riders forget, and that is the functionality. How functional are you for cycling? How much time do you spend or are you willing to spend off the bike improving your range of movement through your pelvis, improving the activation of the glute, improving the strength of the glute, improving the functional strength of the quadricep. I often say to riders, you don't do it, like behind me, you don't do the functional work because you can't upload it to Strava. <laughs> it's not sexy. Oh, 10 minutes doing that, Scott, do I really need to? I just want to get out and ride quick. If we tend to artificially alter and chase speed, the body's really clever. At the end of the day, the body's not a machine like this. It's living tissue. And it's got a range of movement that will find a way sometimes around an artificial placement of something. So, can crank length work, Scott, get to the point? It can, and it can.
I don't believe there is a right crank length for a particular rider. If you're functional in that and you have got good range of movement, there is no impingement through the hip or very little, you'll find that if you put a 170 on or a 1725 or a 165, you'll probably ride efficiently. You're a macro adapter because you're functional. Your range of movement is good, your pedal efficiency is good, your stability through the cleats is good, you've got everything set up, you've got the fore aft position of the saddle dialed in for you, you've got the correct bar width for your shoulder girdle. It works for you. I would rather a rider plays around with their functional ability rather than just chase something straight away because they've read it or they've seen something on the internet. If you go too short, what will happen is you'll have a soft load at the top of the pedal stroke. So when you come through the zero, you'll probably find yourself spilling forward or falling forward onto the bars and you'll have that deactivation period at a crucial point as we sweep through the bottom. Now remember, in a time trial position, we're going to be much further beyond the pedal spindle and we're going to drive through the bottom of the stroke. And if we drive through and we allow the pedal to come over the top, we've got that softer period because we're falling forward. That's not good. And that's where leverage comes in. So obviously, mechanical, if it was a machine, leverage is very important. Longer the leverage, greater the power, etc. I'm going to get. But you're not a machine. So you've got to experiment around it. So if you are over six foot, for example, dropping down to a 165 just because someone says it's more efficient to have a shorter crank, we'll be able to increase RPM, therefore you'll go quicker. Power, this is, might shock you, and it's quite readily available, power is force, the gear, times velocity, the RPM. The two of them together. By improving just one, yeah, we'll make gains, but you've got to work on both. Okay, work on both. It's like when people say to me, I want to increase my FTP, Scott, lose some weight. Eh, what? Yeah, if you increase power and decrease weight, FTP will go up, but power to weight is more important than your FTP. Again, depending on what your goal is uh, for your event. So don't necessarily look at crank length as the answer to all your issues. Get somebody to look at whether there is any hip impingement whether there is something there that you can work on. And then five minutes a day of exercises off the bike may then come next year a huge new world of exploration on the bike, huge new gains in efficiency, huge new gains in power, and being able to go quicker for a longer period, basically slowing down less when you're out on the bike. And you've got to remember, when you're setting up your saddle, when you change crank length, there are adjustments you've got to make. It's not a matter of, oh, I drop it two millimetres or drop my saddle two millimetres. It doesn't work like that because that's going to change the position of the hip. It's going to change the position of the knee as we go through. And if you're not functional, if there are little weaknesses in your kinetic chain of movement, remember, for a lot of people, we can have, I can bring in 10 riders who will all complain, ah, I've got a little bit of lower back pain, Scott. And each one of them, may have a different weak point. For one, it may be through the ankle. For another, it may be through the knee. For another, it may actually be through the wrist. But what happens is that lack of functionality in that joint ends up with the same pain point. And by fixing that, we actually alleviate the back pain. So I've seen lots of riders who come to me and they say, I want to change my crank length, and I'll show them Actually, your bars are too wide. Therefore, you're doing a wide arm press up on the bike. So therefore, the muscles that are actually there for overworking to support the front end, because your pelvis has collapsed and you're then supporting your head with muscles that should be helping breathing, etc., etc. Fix the bar with, suddenly, the knees are better, the lower back's better. It's all these things that you take into account. I kind of always come back to the point of do the work off the bike to support your posture. Not only will that help you on the bike, it will actually save you a bit of money because <laughs> you'll not need to keep buying extra bits. And it will also improve your health and well-being off the bike. Think to yourself, how often do I spend each day sitting on my backside? Well, how much time do you spend working on your glutes when you're off the bike? If that's zero, then think about that. 
How can I actually improve my posture on the bike? Because remember, we want to be taking no more than 15% of the load through the bars. A lot of riders who've got poor posture and maybe carrying a little bit more weight around the middle, they're overloading the front end and that's where the problems are coming from. And that's what drives them back to crank length. So, I hope that helps. I haven't given you a definitive crank length. I'm sure people will complain and say there is one. Look, everybody's entitled to an opinion. I've seen hundreds. And yes, I've seen evidence that suggests for some riders, a shorter crank will work. But unless you're tested, for example, I have just had a rider in, pedaling efficiency, wonderful, but big issues, complaining of overworking of the quads. And the whole thing was just because the saddle position was in the wrong fore aft position. You tweak that, allow a little bit more room for the hip to work, suddenly efficiency goes up, but they turn off that discomfort through the quads. Rider's gonna get a better time because mentally they're focused then on the performance rather than just waiting for the pain point to come because it always happens to them. So therefore they want to go and change something mechanical rather than look at the functionality of their own body. Hey, you get in touch if you've got any questions. And remember, anyone can train hard. There's only a few of us can train smart. I'll see you in the next video. You stay safe.